Hello, this is Hans van der Quast, Senior Lecturer at IHG Delft Institute for Water Education. In previous videos I've demonstrated how to delineate a catchment and its streams, assuming that you only have a digital elevation model. For more data-rich areas, or areas where OpenStreetMap has a good coverage, a good hydrological coverage, you can also burn in the river network to improve the results. That's what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. We're going to use the r.carve algorithm from uh, GRASS. Therefore, it's important that you start QGIS with GRASS. Let's first uh, mosaic the SRTM tiles that we have downloaded from the USGS website or with the SRTM downloader plugin. So with this tool, we are going to build a virtual raster because we don't need uh, the full GeoTIFF. We just need a virtual file because we are only using it temporarily. So I'm going to save it here to DM Mosaic. So this step is similar to uh, the normal delineation method where we don't have streams. And let's remove the data that we don't need anymore. The next step is to uh, subset the DEM and to reproject and we're going to do that in one step by using export save as and here we give the output file name let's call it uh, DEM reprojected subset it's a geotiff and we change the projection here I use it from the recently used list, but you can also select it based on the EPSG code. And I calculate the boundaries from the layer bounding box that I loaded. And I set the spatial resolution to 30 meters. And click OK. And there it is. We remove the mosaic. And we're going to set the on-the-fly reprojection of the project to the one of this layer. And we do that by clicking right, set CRS uh, from uh, the layer to the project, and we zoom to the layer. Now we're going to have a look if there's data on rivers available on OpenStreetMap. We use the Quick Map Services plugin and use the OSM standard. And everything that we see on this map can be downloaded later with the Quick OSM plugin. And we see that the Ruhr River is also defined here on the map which means it's downloadable for us, and we can use that to burn that into the DEM. So now we go to Vector, Quick OSM. If you don't have it, install the Quick OSM plugin, which uses the Overpass API. And we can choose here as a key waterway, and its value river. There's another video where I explain more how to use this. And we will use a layer extent, and we use there the DEM reprojected subset. Make sure you only choose the lines, because we want the rivers as lines, not as points or polygons. doesn't make much sense. And then we run the query. And when we close the dialog, we can see that all these rivers from OpenStreetMap have loaded. Now let's inspect the attribute table. Here it loads. And we see a column with name, and uh, now the trick is to use that name column to filter out the mainstream of the Ruhr. So I go to the Select by Expression dialog, and I say name equals, and if I push there the All Unique Values button, it gives me all the options, and I see there already Ruhr, which is the Dutch spelling, and then I click Select Features, and those features are selected. And I also use RUR, which is the German spelling of the Ruhr River. And I click then on the drop down and you can say add to current selection. And now those are also selected, those features. Close the dialog. And I can uh, at the bottom of the attribute table say show selected features. There I see the 26 uh, river segments with those names Roar and RUR. Next step is to save those selected features because we only want the mainstream of the Roar. And to use that for burning in the river network. And I save it as Roar underscore OSM. Change the projection to the one of this project. And uh, now the selected segments are saved as Roar underscore OSM. And we can remove our temporary waterway river layer. Let's uh, style this a little bit using a blue line for uh, hydrology. 
and uh, we'll remove uh, the DEM in the background and uh, let's see if this resembles then the Ruhr from OpenStreetMap and there we can see it and if we pan to the outlet then we can also see that it follows the mainstream of the Ruhr into the Meuse River or the Maas in Dutch now we need to do a few corrections of this uh, OpenStreetMap layer. It needs to be continuous and it needs to be one line. So the best thing to do is to switch off the DEM and go uh, follow the river. And here we see already that uh, there's two parts of it. I go to editing mode. And I'm going to check on the OpenStreetMap background which one is which. And I'm going to remove one of those that is less relevant. So I'm going to remove in this case that one. I used the selection uh, tool. And when I click the delete button, uh, it's deleted. And I do that for uh, several other points too. Here we see another problem. A part of the segment is uh, missing. So we use the node tool to select the nodes. And we see that we can connect those nodes. But first we need to switch on the snapping toolbar. We click right on uh, the toolbars and switch on the snapping toolbar, click the magnet and now uh, we can select with the node tool this node and the red line makes clear to which point we drag it and the magnet will make sure that it connects to the node where we want to go. There it is. And then we can uh, save the edits and uh, do a final check Now let's uh, toggle off the editing mode and all these different segments are uh, separate features and we need to dissolve this first, although it's a wise thing to do. So we use the dissolve function from the vector uh, geoprocessing menu and we dissolve all the features so the Ruhr river will be just one feature, one line that we can use later. So let's call it uh, Ruhr dissolved. And we run the algorithm, it's pretty fast. Let's first uncheck this. Let's check the attribute table. We see that it's one feature now. Let's uh, copy the style from Roar OSM to Roar Dissolve to make it more visible. Now it's time to burn this river in the DEM, so we start the processing toolbox and under grass we find r.carve. Uh, when we hover we see a little explanation and it's uh, exactly what we need, so we're going to use this dialog. And, uh, make sure you choose the DEM and you use the Ruhr dissolved layer. And you can set here the stream width in meters. Let's use 2 pixels, so that's 60 meters. And we use a depth here of two meters additional. So it will subtract one meter and we will have two extra. You have to play a bit with these numbers to get the optimal uh, result. In this case uh, this setting uh, gives nice results. And we only need the uh, modified elevation. I'm going to save it as a TIFF and uh, we call it uh, DEM burned. And then we can click run Give some warning and errors, but that's not so important for the result. So let's use the styling panel to uh, style this DEM. Go to single band pseudocolor because it's a continuous raster layer. And we choose the CPT city for some presets on elevation. Topography, elevation. And there it is. Because we're very zoomed in, um, I'm going to change this min-max settings to the current canvas so it stretches those colors. Because what I want to demonstrate is the effect of the burning on the elevation values. We see already the river in the DM values. Now I'm going to copy this same legend here, the same style, to the original uh, raster. And I'm going to also uncheck the word dissolved. And here you see the effect. You see that the river is now lower than uh, in the original DEM. 
Let's also check what happened at the outlet. So we use updated canvas, so every time we update uh, the extent, it will update the stretching. And there we also see that the river is uh, visible. The next step is to use the fill algorithm, which makes sure that also the other pixels will be draining towards the river that we have burned in. So we use the Wang and Liu fill sinks algorithm from the processing toolbox. Call it them filled and save it. And we only need um, the filled DEM as an output, so we uncheck the other boxes. And then we run the algorithm. Click close when it's done. Let's uh, copy the style so we can see the result. Zoom to the layer. And the next step is to calculate the strata orders. So we can check how the streams are developed now. Save the Strahler, run the algorithm. Click close when it's done. Let's uh, style this layer. It's uh, palleted unique values. Click classify and use uh, a ramp of blues. So do more blue for the higher orders, which are closer to the stream. And uh, let's use the raster calculator to determine uh, which strata order responds uh, with the stream. And we choose uh, larger or equal to 8. This calibration is explained in another video, because normally you compare it with the OpenStreetMap uh, backdrop, and then choose the right level. Let's uh, remove the underlying strata layer and uh, visualize this one. So let's style it using paletted unique values again because it's uh, boolean so it only has 0 and 1 as we can see. We remove the zeros, we make the ones blue and uh, we remove the underlying layer so we can compare it with the uh, OpenStreetMap. We zoom in we can see that now this Strahler order river follows uh, the river on the OpenStreetMap, which makes sense because we use that river to burn in the river network. It's not everywhere the case, but uh, it follows it uh, mostly, but the uh, fill sinks algorithm of course has uh, changed it. So the next step is to delineate uh, the catchment by using the outflow point. And we use the upslope function from the processing toolbox from Saga. And uh, we're going to use the coordinate capture tool if you don't see that, you can activate it. We start capture and we get the outlet. We can get it here. Make sure you're within the pixel. And then we copy the coordinates. And make sure that for elevation you choose uh, DEM filled. And we leave for now the other things as default and we save it to Rural Catchment Burn Saga as dot. Then we run it. We close the dialog and we see the catchment of that outlet. Um, the next step is to convert this raster file to a vector by polygonizing it. Save it as a shape file. And call it Rural Catchment Burn Saga because later I'm going to compare it with the other results from uh, the other videos. There it is, the vector layer. It has uh, the catchment plus the boundary, um, and we need to now select everything except the inner part of the catchment. So that is the catchment, so with this button we can invert the selection, toggle to editing, and uh, click the delete button. And then when I toggle off and save it, I now have the catchment polygon. I remove the raster. And now I can style the catchment boundary using a simple outline. And there it is.
So for comparison, I've now added uh, in black the results from Saga without burning, in green uh, with grass, and in blue uh, the result of this uh, exercise where we burned uh, the rivers from OSM, OpenStreetMap, into the DEM. So we see that our uh, stream in blue nicely follows the OpenStreetMap and that uh, much coarser is the one in black. The grass one is a bit finer but they also both deviate quite a bit from the original stream. But if you don't have any OpenStreetMap data then uh, yeah, you have to model this using stream delineation as explained in previous videos. Now what's the effect on the catchment boundary? Uh, we see that the catchment in other cases um, end up in a different place than the real outlet and we see that there are some uh, changes on the on the borders so you've learned how to use additional information if that's available uh, a river layer to improve the results of the catchment delineation